guys, it's your girl Frankie here and today is all about nursing. Yes. So, if you want the pros and cons of being a home healthcare private duty nurse, then just keep on watching. About the pros and cons of private duty nursing which aka is home care nursing home health care nursing um, I'm bringing you guys this video because I get a lot of questions in regards to that um, if you do not know or if you're new to this channel then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell um, so you'll be notified of videos that I upload every Tuesday and Friday every week um, but today is about nursing okay normally I do a lot of um, natural hair and things like that in regards to my channel which I have me some passion twist in right now um, if you're interested in how I did that I do have a video on the passion twist I will put the link down below and also somewhere up on this screen um, but today yes it's all about nursing because I get a lot of questions and I am a private duty nurse I did work at the nursing homes for over a little over a year and then I switched over to being a private duty nurse so um, the nursing home can be a whole nother video but I do have a video surviving my first year as a nurse um, I will put that down below for you guys as well okay so check that out okay so let's go ahead and get started so with private duty nursing um, the number one thing is you have one patient at a time which is whoo so much like calming and less stressful okay I will say that so you start off with one patient um because you're just going to the patient's home and taking care of that patient okay compared to a nursing home where you could have anywhere between um, 15 to 60 patients um, at one time with a number of maybe two to three sometimes four CNAs um, yeah it's completely different with private duty nursing you're the only nurse in the home um, if you are a night shift nurse like me I'm a night shift nurse then um, I'm the I'm the only person in the home with the patient um, if you do daytime like a day shift then you may have one CNA there with you um, you know things like that so um, really that is a plus for me I'm an introvert so I like to be by myself so I absolutely love being a private duty nurse compared to working at a nursing home okay so <clears throat> let's go ahead and start from the beginning though okay so we already talked about the best part is you only have one patient so starting from the beginning when you're applying to be a private duty nurse let's go ahead and get down to the nitty-gritty what you want to know they will lowball you your pay okay we're gonna talk about pay they will try to give you the bottom of the barrel the the little gravel at the bottom of the ocean whatever just honey they are not trying to pay you and what they will say is oh well you're only responsible for one patient compared to if you were at a nursing home you would have like 30 patients they always try to pull that let me tell y'all something okay even though you have one patient okay this is the con even though you have one patient you are still doing everything okay so you are the physical therapy the occupational therapy you are being the nurse you are also the cna you're also the house um the housemaid or oh, maybe shouldn't use that term uh, you're also being a homemaker um as well because you have to fix their dinner you have to if they can't feed their stuff you have to feed them you have to do um related stretches in regards to what physical therapy would normally do in a nursing home they will come in and do um walk in the patient and do all that stuff well you're responsible for doing that as well um so that is a con you're doing everything okay so just be aware of that when you are applying for private duty nursing um, I will say with private duty nursing, um, as I did say, a con, they will lowball you with your pay. 
and also you're responsible for doing everything okay so another kind of private duty nursing is that you're the only nurse so if there is an emergency like you only have this two sets of hands okay so you only can do so much i'm gonna give you guys an example okay so with my job um another nurse you know was taking care of a pediatric patient and the pediatric patient had a trach well the trach um came out okay um the tie i guess she was changing the ties by herself or something which i do not recommend by the way if you have a little baby or something don't be trying to change no trach ties or anything by yourself unless you're a complete expert at that because babies move kids move and things happen and yeah but anyways so she went to change the trach and it popped out okay the baby can't breathe okay so now she you know then found the trach put it in but she only had another hand okay so this hand is occupied because you got to hold the trach in so it don't pop back out this hand she was trying to get the trach ties um, she couldn't get the trach ties, she couldn't reach them. Also, she couldn't um, get the baby suction because the baby needed suctioning at that time. So the baby was turning completely blue and she had to yell for the parents to come upstairs to help her with the baby and to get oxygen on the baby and all this stuff. So the baby ended up going to the hospital and it was, you know, just kind of horrible. The nurse decided she didn't want to go back and the parents also decided that that was a pretty good idea, that they both had a mutual agreement that she wouldn't come back to their home, okay? So, which I learned about that the next, you know, when I came back to work, the, the mom actually told me what happened, so yeah. So you have to be, um, that is one of the cons that you have to be aware of. Some things, sometimes emergency happens, so it is best that if you are the only nurse to have everything within reach, everything right there, and some tasks you have to know and critical think or common sense think hey, I'm gonna need another person to help me. A lot of the times with private duty nursing, if you're working with pediatrics, you have a parent in the home um, for a most part of the time. If not, they're probably at work or you know, probably sleep. Um, but a lot of the times you do have a parent um, that is at the house or that's easily accessible, okay? So think about that. I'm trying to get the cons out of the way because really with private duty nursing, there's not really a lot of cons um, but in that situation, compared to a nursing home, you have a whole bunch of staff in the nursing home. So if something like that happens, you can have your CNAs help you. You also have a CNA call um, over the intercom. A lot of nursing homes have intercoms. You can call for nurses to come down to their room. Um, you can have someone delegate, you know, calling 911 while you're doing this and doing that. So you have a little bit more um, support with staff when you're at a nursing home. Okay. So another I'm trying to think so another con with private duty nursing okay so this one could be a con or a pro okay i'm be honest because when you go for your job you can try to negotiate your pay but we'll talk about that in a moment um but a lot of these home health care agencies um for private duty nursing they want you to check off like you're a student all over again. And that one is nerve wracking. Um, two, you're not gonna remember everything that you learned in school. Um, you have a better chance if you, I don't know, got like a ton of experience in it, then yes. So when you go in for your interview for private duty nursing, they do have like a checklist for home health care. Like they wanna know what skills do you have? What skills can you do? What skills do you have uh, experience in that you're proficient in, that you're an expert in? And what skills you feel like you need more help in? Um, don't go in there lying because they gonna find out. Like I said, they have you check off. So once you go to orientation, they will have you go into like a lab with a mannequin and then they will say, hey, show me how you change the trait. Show me how you change the trach tie. Show me how you do um, insert a catheter, how you do um, Foley care, how you do IV. Like they wanna see what you can do, okay? And it's very nerve wracking because not only do they wanna see it, but they're asking you all these critical um, thinking questions, um, stuff you may not be prepared for. So I'm telling you now, if you're thinking about it, just prepare yourself mentally to do a check off. Not all of them have a very detailed check off, um, but you may have, you know, 
some that are very thorough with their checkoffs and some of them are a little bit more laid back so it all depends on who you get that's going to do your checkoff so once you do your checkoff and all of that stuff um they can tell if you're actually a really if you're really proficient in that skill or if you lied about it it's simple okay it, it all will show and depending on your answers you give when you're critical thinking and all that stuff, it will show if you're good at that skill or if you're not good at that skill. And they kind of base that as far as your pay as well with your skill. So if you're a brand new nurse just getting out of nursing school, just because you did it in school and you did it on clinicals, they don't really count that as like major experience as far as um, the skills go. So that's great that you still remember some stuff, but you know, they don't really count that as an experience experience um but you can try to negotiate your pay which is cool and all but if you don't have any experience i mean you need to research basically like the average pay for your field so if you're an lpn you need to research like the average pay for lpn for private duty nursing or home health care nursing or just a lpn um, RN, you need to um, Google those numbers. CNA, Google those numbers. You know what I'm saying? So you need to be finding this out. So when they do throw you an offer, you can be like, mm -mm, honey, Nasus, that's too low. Like, give me my coins. You know what I'm saying? And then you can try to negotiate from there. Um, another thing, be realistic about your negotiation. Okay. Be just really realistic. Don't go in there with no experience. <laughs> you just got out of school asking for $30 an hour. They are not going to give you that. I don't even care if you are um, RN, LPN, whatever. You're not going to get no $30 an hour with no experience. Okay? So just be fully aware of that. So make your negotiation realistic when you're going in there to negotiate your pay or with whatever they're offering you okay so another thing with private duty nursing um like i said is you're the only nurse in the house so a pro is that you're not responsible for anybody else but yourself me i absolutely love that i love to go in do my job and go home okay i don't like all that extra in between stuff let me go work do my job and go home at the nursing home you're responsible for your cnas and all the things that they do and if something's not done right or something didn't get done they're coming to the nurse and they're questioning you as to why certain things didn't get done and all that stuff it's just so much it's just such a big headache um private duty nursing you don't have that you don't constantly have anyone looking over your shoulder you don't have to watch anybody um, you don't have to be a babysitter um, to staff or anything like that. You are just there by yourself doing your own thing, taking care of your patient and following the care plan that is provided to you um, for your patient. Okay. Another pro to private duty nursing is you have a lot of support. So if you, because, okay, so for my job, say I didn't know how to do vents. Okay. That's not something they really... Um, go in detail about in nursing school or anything like that even in a nursing home there's not anyone on vents they may be on like CPAP machines or something but not like a vent um which you know I was like okay but they provided me the training so my one job they were very thorough thorough with their training like they had me come in well actually they sent me like five modules online to do these modules online over vents, you know, going through all the vents, the settings, and what to expect and what to do in this emergency, and da, 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 right? Then I had to go into the building for a training. So I had to go in the building, do a training on vent with the instructor, and then we do hands on stuff. And she, you know, basically going through all the things that the modules went through, but it's more hands on in the lab. Once I did that, then they required me to go to a, a client's house that had a vent with another nurse. And she would check off um, what we did in the skills as well in regards to the vent. Now, you would think you would be done, but honey, no. Then they wanted me to come back to the office and check off again over the vent. So to me, it was a little bit of an overkill, but at the end, I feel super confident in vents because they made me do all of those steps, even though it was super annoying because I'm like, man, this is just ridiculous. What's the point of event training class and all these modules if i still have to come back in and go to somebody's house and do it and come back in and do the the test out and all this stuff all over again like it was 
it was just a headache but at the end of the day I know what to do in pretty much any situation that comes to event and I know how to work in event okay so that is a pro you definitely will get adequate training um, there another pro is that if you don't feel comfortable with the patient um, say okay so my first my first patient that I got um, of course they want you to go in for training for like a couple hours they don't have you going out for eight hours and all this stuff really technically um, but if you're a night shift then you'll go in when the night shift nurse go in and you'll stay for a couple hours just to see kind of how the nighttime routine goes you can ask questions look through the book um, look through their care plan and stuff like that okay so you know if you like for me the nighttime portion wasn't that bad but in the daytime this page this particular patient got a shower every morning and we had to manual like i would have to manually transfer them with the gate belt from the chair from the wheelchair to the shower which is not bad but the fact is this patient was a lot heavier and a lot taller than me so it was hard to get a really good grip um to get them there and then transfer them the same way back to the chair considering the floor and stuff would be wet um so it was a little difficult so i just let them know and the guy that trained me you know it was no like he had no problem coming out um at five in the morning to help me with this transfer and to show me this transfer so i felt like um you know the training the the willingness was um you know like they wanted to do it which is always a good feeling when you are working in a field and you actually have people that want to help you and want you to succeed it's always a good comfortable feeling um so that is definitely a pro they will make sure that you feel comfortable and if you don't they will make sure they get you the training that you need in order to feel comfortable so keep that in mind another pro um to home health care is that a lot of the times you're not stuck staying over the time that you get off which is honey a round of applause for that i was not used to that i am so used to when i did work at a nursing home when I say the nurses, I did. I always have the night shift. When I say the nurses would come in late, and I'm not talking about like five or ten minutes late, y'all. I mean like an hour to like thirty minutes, an hour to an hour and thirty minutes late. That is what I'm talking about. And I have stuff I need to do. I have my kids. I gotta get off to school and things. You know, like when you have things to do. I can't be sitting at work for no extra hour, an hour and a half when I get off at 7, but the nurse comes at 8 o'clock or 8.30. Um, and then you're still stuck with doing work while people are still coming up to the nursing station and asking questions and wanting things done and you got to do ECU checks and all of this stuff, you know, all because the nurse is still not there yet. And you still have to count narcotics when they get there and you have to give report. So that's another like 30 minutes, if not... 40 minutes because you might have some interruptions while you're doing that so that used to make me mad every morning like I did not like it okay so I'm gonna be honest that's just one thing that I did not like and did not take very well okay um, but with private duty nursing a lot of the times like the one patient I had he went to work so he would have to be at work at 7 so he will leave the house at 6 30 so technically my shift is over at 6 30. um it was a couple times i would stay um until 7 if i still had the chart depending on how our night went i would still have the chart change the trash you know maybe tidy up the kitchen a little bit like um you know but other than that i would get home on time if not early which i absolutely love and also Another pro is they do not duck lunch time out of your your hours. So if you work 12 hours for private duty nursing, then you work 12 hours. You know, it ain't no, oh, we're gonna subtract 30 minutes for lunch or hour for lunch. They don't do that because you're the only nurse there. So they know technically you don't really have that time to eat lunch. Even depend, it just depends on your client because you may have a lot of downtime to eat lunch depending on their care plan. Um, and sometimes you may be really busy and you kind of eat lunch really late. So they don't really um, count lunch because you can be easily interrupted. If your patient needs something, you have to stop eating lunch and go help your patient with what they need help with. Then you can return back to eating lunch. Um, so that is a pro is that they don't just automatically deduct lunch out of your... They don't even talk about lunch, to be honest. 
um, or deducted out of your paycheck. So if you work 12 hours, honey, that's your 12 hours. If you work 16 hours, that's 16 hours. Like, that is a plus, okay? Another pro um, with home, like home health care, private duty nursing, um, is that a lot of the times you're not responsible for counting narcotics. Um, which may sound a little crazy if you come from nursing homes, you know that narcotics is a big part of your shift and counting them and passing them. Well, uh, it's a little bit different with home health care. A lot of the times, if the patient is or in their right minds, they take care of their own counting of their narcotics. Or if there are pediatrics, their parents take care of the counting of the narcotics and you may have to get them. I've run into very few pediatrics that we actually give narcotics to and that's just being honest. Um, the adult client that I have, um, he keeps his narcotics in a lock box and he unlocks it. I go get the pills out and I put them back and then he locks it back. So he's in control of his own narcotics, so I don't have to worry about counting on narcotics or anything like that. Um, a, okay, so a con that I just thought of is that you may not get to utilize your skills as much as you would like. So in a nursing home, you get to, you know, do wound care, you get to do the, um, you know, you may have foleys, you may have some trachs, um, you may have, um, some colostomy bags. You know, you may have just a bigger variety of things in a nursing home. Um, and also in emergency situations, you may have that arise a lot more. Um, but in private duty nursing, really a lot of the patients don't have a lot of narcotics or they don't have a lot of, like they don't have any wounds that you have to change. Um, we're actually not even responsible for any wounds from my from what I've encountered I haven't done any wounds even if they had a wound a wound nurse or somebody would come out and take care of that That's not something we would do um, Also, let me see I've done the um, straight cat thing uh, You know trachs are pretty big with home health care nursing So you definitely want to be up on your trach care and how to do trachs because uh, a lot of people do have trachs. Um, there's quite a few people that may be on vents, which you may need that type of training, which your um, agency will probably provide for you. Um, if you do not have that training, just let them know and they'll make sure they get you the training that you need so you can, um, you know, widen your variety of patients you can have. So that is one of the cons I will say is that you may not get to utilize your skills as much because a lot of the patients, they may need help with medication um, but a lot of times they need help with just basic CNA work, like uh, dressing, make sure they get showers, making sure they get in bed, making sure they're repositioned, and things like that. So um, I would say 95% of my job is more so of just kind of the basic care, and then the other percent is nursing with narcotics and things like that, assessments and stuff like that. So, you know. So that is one of the kinds, if you're looking for something that you want to just head, you know, dive in head first, just doing a lot of like skills and wounds and all this stuff, then private duty nursing is not for you because a lot of times you're not going to run into a lot of those issues. Okay? Okay. Okay. So one of the, um, another pro um, to private duty nursing is that you are able to kind of make your own schedule. So that is one thing that I absolutely love um, in regards to private duty nursing is that the company that I work for, they send out calendars every month, blank calendars every month of your email, and then you fill in the days that you want to work and the days that you do not want to work. Now, if you're more of the person that wants like set days, you can have that too, which is awesome. So if you say, hey, you know, I really like this patient. I want to work um, Monday through Friday, eight hour shifts. And if those shifts are open and no other nurse is on those shifts, they will give that to you and that will be your schedule. And then 
um, the next month, say you're going on a vacation and you need some days off, you just put an X through the day that you would not be available and they know so they will start looking for coverage um, for those days ahead of time. So that's one thing that I really, really love. You don't actually have to put in a time off request or you know use PTO or anything like that because you know you kind of just make your schedule month by month another pro is that if you get to a client and you're not quite feeling that client and you're not feeling that house you can request a new client and they a lot of agencies are more than willing to put you in a home that you feel comfortable in because they don't want you to be uncomfortable they don't want the client to be uncomfortable and they want the optimal optimum care given to that client so if you don't like it it's not a big deal they will move you over to a new client now okay now there is a catch to this okay so the con to this is if the client really likes you as a nurse it's going to be very very difficult to get out of their house i'm gonna be honest so the first time you go to their house, if you're not feeling the vibe and you're not feeling it, then go ahead and cut ties right then and there, okay? It's not best to drag it on and be like still going to work like, oh, maybe I'll like it, maybe I'll like it, no, no, no. You know you don't really like it there, then, and then they do like you there, then it's going to be hard for them to get you moved to another house because they also want to satisfy their patient, you know, because those are people that are paying the money. So. They want to satisfy them as well. So as soon as you get there, if you're not feeling it, then go ahead and request to go to a new house because therefore no attachment has started or formed and it's easy for you to get out. Um, if you wait, then it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. It may take a little bit longer for you to get out that house, but eventually you will get out the house, but it's going to take some time, okay? Because they're going to have to find a replacement and things like that. Um, to take your spot especially if you've been doing like certain days or every other weekend and stuff like that so just keep that in mind as a con is that you know i mean it's also a pro that someone likes you but if you're not feeling the same way then it's definitely a con and you know it may be difficult to get out the house if they really like you so just think about that oh but another con i would say is that when you're going into someone's home, especially pediatrics home, you have to deal with other family members. And the good thing about the home healthcare agencies is that you really only take care of your patient, okay? So when you go in there, you take care of your patient, you clean up after what you mess up. So if I cook my patient dinner, then I'm responsible for cleaning it up. If I'm using that trash can for their dirty stuff that, you know, that pertains to my job, then I take that trash out. I can do my client's laundry if it needs to be done. A lot of pediatrics, um, you know, homes, the parents will take care of all of the laundry and all that stuff. But still, you know, you want to be courteous and clean up after yourself or, you know, play with the toys had a baby play with toys on the floor you want to clean that up um, and put them away things like that now if you're in a home that have multiple kids then yes it's going to get a little messy you got to not get in the habit of cleaning up after the family because once you get in the habit of cleaning up after the family or something like that then the family will expect expect it and then that will cause later down the line like uh confusion and problems okay so so don't get in the habit of cleaning up after the whole family and if you got downtime and you see that the kitchen is dirty so you want to go in there washing dishes and sweeping and mopping and all that like don't do all of that because once you start doing all that they're gonna want to like they're gonna expect you to do that and when you don't do that they're gonna be like well, why you didn't do that why you didn't do that and then you're gonna have an attitude and be like i ain't even supposed to do that like it ain't in my job script and they're gonna be like well, why you do that you know what i'm saying like so you have to pick and choose your battles. I'm telling you right now, don't get into that whole thing. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, I feel like if you're pretty laid back and you and you want a less stressful environment and you want to be responsible for yourself and your actions, then definitely you should check out private duty nursing or home health cares in your city and just kind of see what they have to offer. A lot of them do offer 401ks and health benefits and vision and dental of course you have to work um like 30 hours 30 or more hours a week in order to qualify for those benefits but that's kind of with any job you want to be full-time um 
Also with the home health care agency that I did not mention, but this is definitely a pro, a lot of them pay weekly. So if you've been a nurse and you know nursing home, a lot of nursing homes pay bi-weekly. A lot of jobs in nursing are bi-weekly pay. Well, nursing homes and private duty nursing is a weekly paid um, like job. So you get paid every week. That's pretty much it. I hope that was very helpful for you guys. I hope that I gave you a lot of information. I only can speak on my experience and of course, you know, what I've been through and what I've noticed, but I wouldn't steer y'all wrong, okay? I'm not gonna steer you wrong. I'm gonna be very honest with y'all. And y'all know, y'all know this how it is. So definitely choose wisely. But yeah, so if you have not already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell button so you will be notified of videos I put up every Tuesday and Friday. And um, follow me on my Instagram at facesbf. And then also my um, Snapchat at Faces by Frankie, um, just to stay up to date with what I'm doing and things like that. And if you have any questions for me, go ahead and drop them down below in my comment section. And I will be more than happy to answer them for you guys. And that's pretty much it. Like, I know this was a pretty long video, but I definitely want to come and just talk about it because I got so many questions about it. So hopefully it was helpful. Um, but that's pretty much it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!